Well, according to the All China Women's Federation, about a quarter of married women have experienced some form of domestic violence. Tens of thousands of women commit suicide in China every year, and about 60 percent of these are thought to be related to domestic violence. Abuse comes in different forms, ranging from physical harm and sexual assault to emotional torture. And violence in the home has become more frequent during the coronavirus pandemic. Blue Sky, a Hubei-based NGO that aims to stop domestic violence, says it received around 160 reports of domestic abuse in February at the height of the lockdown. And that's more than three times the number of complaints at the same time last year. Well, China passed its first anti-domestic violence law in 2016. The government recommends mediation as the first port of call in sorting out such cases. But many studies show this method to be ineffective. And now we want to talk more about this and let me bring in our guest. We have on the phone Professor Peng Chun from the Peking University Law School. Welcome, Professor, to China 24. Now, as a legal expert, I want to hear your thoughts on this. China passed an anti-domestic violence law a little over four years ago, but what else could be done besides increasing penalties? Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, there is no doubt that this is a very tragic case and horrendous crime. Um, from the legal perspective, the perpetrator who cold-bloodedly murdered Lamu committed a heinous crime uh, that is certainly punishable and will be punished by the criminal law. Uh, under Article 232 of the law, the suspect has committed premeditated homicide and will be facing up to death penalty. However, no matter how much punishment he gets eventually, there is no way to bring uh, the victim back. And that is why we as a whole should reflect on this case deeply to think about uh, what our legal system can do so that such tragedies will not happen ever again. As we just mentioned, in 2016, China passed uh, its own anti-domestic violence law. Over the past four years, uh, this landmark legislation has made some successes. Uh, for instance, uh, the All China Women's Federation reported that from 2018 to 2019, there have been uh, around 10 percent decrease in domestic violence complaints for two consecutive years. Uh, earlier this year, the Ministry of Public Security announced that the police uh, stopped or prevented more than six million incidents of domestic violence for the past four years. And by December 2019, the court in China has issued more than 5,700 protection orders uh, for domestic violence victims. And the number has increased from less than 700 in 2016 to over 2,000 in 2019. However, as you just mentioned and demonstrated by the recent Lamu tragedy, uh, there is a huge gap between the law on paper and the law in action. And that means that the law has to do more uh, than just stipulating harsh punishment for uh, fighting pervasive domestic violence in our society. Uh, two points. Uh, on the one hand, I think that the law itself still has many loopholes. Uh, for example, it covers married couples, cohabitating partners and other family members, but does not deal with violence against former spouses, uh, which is precisely the case uh, for Lamu. Yeah. or intimate partners who do not live together. Uh, it covers physical and psychological violence, but it does not explicitly include sexual violence, uh, such as marital rape or economic control, such as deprivation of financial resources. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there is much room for improving the implementation of the law. Take the much celebrated protection order as an example. Delay and rejection of issuing these orders have been widely observed. Mm. Uh, this is because there are still no national implementation guidelines to standardize criteria and procedures for recognizing domestic violence and protecting victims. Yeah. As a result, um, where there are hundreds of thousands of women suffering from domestic abuse in China every year, as I have just mentioned, the number of the protection orders issued by the courts are merely uh, a few thousand each year. Well, Professor, what advice would you give to women who are encountering domestic violence? Because in Lamu's case, she divorced um, the same man twice. He constantly abused her and she wanted to just leave him once and for all. But in the end, we saw that tragedy happening. Uh, so 
can we learn anything from how other countries handled this issue? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, usually speaking, uh, violence escalates. In other words, domestic violence often, uh, although not necessarily, starts from verbal abuses and minor physical aggression. Therefore, my advice is that one should be very vigilant and resolutely show your disapproval and protest to the aggressor. When any violence takes place, you should seek for help immediately from friends, family members, and ultimately uh, the police. Article 16 and 17 of the anti-domestic violence law provide that the public security agencies must issue warning letters to minor offenders and share such letters to the local public authority, which have the legal authority and duty to keep an eye on the perpetrators to prevent further violation. However, in reality, as you probably know, due to the long-held Chinese tradition of do not wash your dirty linen in public, the victims are typically very reluctant to report such cases to the public authority. And as the old Chinese saying goes, even upright officials cannot mm -hmm. adjudicate family affairs. Uh, public officials yeah. in China, including the police and judges, find it very difficult to deal with such matters, especially when it involves divorce and custodial disputes. In this light, I think the law should do more to encourage abuse reporting yeah. and facilitate the tackling of domestic violence.